hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs>
on trust for Mr. Calzaghe and that Mr. Warren had interfered with that trust since the action against Sports Network Limited had been, had been stayed by virtue of the administration. Mr. Calzaghe did not pursue paragraphs in Mr. Calzaghe's amended defence and counterclaim against Sports Network Limited, which alleged, for example, breach of fiduciary duty and liability to make equitable compensation. Bottom line is this, right? Joe Calzaghe was owed £1,813,055 and he received 260,000. So all you had to ask Simon Jordan was, Frank, did you pay Joe Calzaghe, yes or no? Another one, why didn't you ask him, Frank, did you bounce three £15,000 checks with Curtis Woodhouse's name on? There's two for starters, and there's more. We can go on and on and on and on. But what we've got here, we've got yet again media making out that they're doing their job. When it, But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, they feel the nappy, don't they? A bit like when Umar, IFL Umar, and Coogie, Coogie Bear and Rob Tebber and all the rest of them, Gareth A. Davis, they all get bricked up, don't they, on the hook. And what do they do then? They back off. That's right, these people back off. So all you've got to do is go online. Go online and look. Type in Google, Warren versus Calzaghe. And look at all the judgments and what was said in court. It's all there in black and white. So Mr. Frank Warren, who sues anybody who goes, goes against him, you come and sue me, I've got a few quid. Come and sue me. Come and sue me, I've got lawyers as pals. I'll take you on, Bricktop. Stop telling whoppers. We know what's been going on here. It's been going on for years. You got beat in court, just like you got beat against Don King, didn't you? Hey, never mind all that. Well, fighters crossed street and came back to me. Do you think Don King were bothered about that? Once he did one with all them millions, he won't bothered. Just admit you took an L on the chin and that's it. You folded your company rather than pay up. You didn't think Joe would go through with it, did you? Fair play to Joe Calzaghe. But at the end of the day, Joe Calzaghe's got no knackers anyway. He was a protected fighter for years. And then sometime after, he only goes down and sees Bricktop and wants to be his pal again and wants him... To promote people, oh my God. What? <laughs> That's like being bit by a crocodile in a river that you have to walk by every day when you can go another route. And then a year later, you go walk by the same river, don't you? Jesus, eh? And they tell me boxers are supposed to be bright. Do me a favour. Brick top. You know what happened, don't you? You know, lad, you know. And do you know Simon Jordan? I don't look at you as like I did before now. I don't, honestly. It's not the first time as well. You had Eddie Hills on your programme the other day and it was all a bit mumble-jumble, wasn't it? Why don't you try and do your homework first before you get these interviews with people, these famous boxing promoters or sports stars? Just do your homework and ask a simple question. Frank, did you pay Joe Calzaghe? Yes or no? That's all you've got to say. He didn't pay him. It's only because it, it were, when they went for courts and blah de blah and all that, he paid 260 grand. Then folded his company. It's all here on black and white. Google it. It's a bit like Barry Hearn telling tales about Steve Collins' situation and all that, innit? And what were going on, blah de blah. Go and read tran court transcripts from that, court, the court transcripts from that where Steve Collins wiped the floor with Barry, o Barry Hearn in court. I don't see anybody pulling these people in media about this. Hey, eh? Unbelievable. Really, really, very, very disappointed by Simon Jordan. Very, very, very disappointed I am. Peace out. Very disappointed by Simon Jordan. Very disappointed. If anybody thinks that I'm not a Simon Jordan fan... You need to watch this video all the way through to the very end. All right. It's not a long video, but like I said, 
very, very disappointed. These big people are coming into the media and they're talking about a sport that they know nothing, absolutely nothing about. Simon Jordan, before you start getting the big dogs on in interviews, start and do your homework. It's not rocket science. I know you're not well in that. And I'm going to pray for you, me and my family. Okay, we'll pray for you. But with your cancer, prostate, whatever you've got going on. But listen, mate. Very, very poor from you. It's not the first time as well. Do your homework, all right? And don't back off when you get them on the hook. You're going for the kill. That's what media people are supposed to do. It's people like you that are the problem in boxing. You and Umar and Coogan and Gareth A. Davis and Juggie as Oliver. All resting you. All one little circle. It's like a cesspit, isn't it? Utter cesspit. Do your job properly. All you got to do is do your homework. It shouldn't take somebody like me, a small YouTuber, to point these little things out. It's all there online. All right. Start messing around with boxing. You don't know what you're doing. Just do your homework. All right. All these educated people and putting out big words in all these conversations. Just do your homework and say, Bricktop, did you pay Joe Calzaghe? Yes or no? That's all you had to ask him. But you're letting them take you down other avenues, aren't you? You bottled it yet again. Bottle it. Eddie Hearns beat you 2-0. Bricktop's just white flow with you. No, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Anyway, all the best with your battle against cancer. But just do your own work. And then I won't get so revved up, will I? All right, Simon. Pop, pop, bang. Peace out. Where's boxing heading at the moment then now? Where, where is it going really? We've got gimmicks in boxing. Campbell Atten, Conor Ben, Chris Eubank. Tell me their best wins. Hey, eh? What's Chris Eubank's best win? He stepped up twice and lost twice, hasn't he? What's his best win? What's Conor Ben's best win to be world ranked? Well, we've just seen the debacle that's Campbell Atten, haven't we? It's gimmick stuff, gimmick stuff. None of them even sell tickets, so I don't know where boxing's heading. I'm really, really, really worried about what's going on. So, then we've got the drug testing situation. <laughs> Why is Liam Cameron getting a four year drug ban for a tiny mute, minute recreational bit of cocaine in his urine? Why is that? Four year ban. Tyson Fury had a steroid charge, a refusal to have a test and a cocaine charge. He got a two year back dated ban, so why is that? Why have we got the WBA? Right, the WBA with all these belts, what's happening with that? Hey, why have we got fighters like Anthony Yard, Conor Ben, jumping the levels? It's disasters waiting to happen. We all saw what happened with Yard Kovalev. Then when he came back down to domestic level, he got schooled by a one-armed man, Lyndon Arthur, whose, whose other arm were injured and beat him with a jab. What's all that about? Eh? Who, who, who's going to say something if I don't say anything? Eh? Then we've got these YouTubers that have got access, but they're all in bed with everybody. Well, literally. But they're not asking right questions, are they? The pondering to the promoters for access to get paid from views. What what's all that about? And it's filtered now into the to the old school media guys like Steve Bunce, Trish Dixon, uh, in front times, Ron Lewis. None of them want to ask proper questions. They're all pandering to these promoters. You know why? Because they want access. And the managers, what are they doing? The, manager, the, the managers and the trainers are saying nothing, aren't they? Why? Because they want to get their kids on these shows. It's craziness, utter craziness. And don't even get me started about the British Boxing Board of No Control. What are they doing for the sport besides slinking about in hotels and limousines and 
flying all over the world. What are they doing? What are they doing for the sport? Is the sport safe? Yeah, you could say it's safe. Is the pensions for fighters? There's no pensions for fighters, is there? None whatsoever. Then we've got the Tommy, Tr the Tommy Frank debacle. Tommy Frank's a British champion coming off two losses. What about the British Boxing Board's protocol? What about that? So does that mean now every manager who's got a kid who's got two defeats, he's going to get his kid a title shot now? What about earning a title shot for a British title? I thought the British title was supposed to mean something, not these trinket belts. It's such a craziness, but nobody's doing anything about it, are they? What about ticket deals? All these promoters putting fighters on ticket deals. What's happening with that? Ticket deals are illegal. Nobody's saying a word, are they? Nobody's saying a word. Promoters are supposed to promote. Fighters are supposed, are supposed to fight. Managers are supposed to manage. They're not supposed to be in bed with promoters and going against their fighter for their own court. It's utter madness. And like I've just said there, I'm up to here about it. I'm up to here with it, but do you know what? I'm just going to keep going, because who's going to stop me doing these videos? Nobody can stop me doing these. I'm not even warmed up yet. So I don't really know what else to say, really. I'm disappointed with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. I mean, they're in a poor era of heavyweight boxing, but Two heavyweight champions from UK and they can't even fight. One's even lost his belt now. That fight's further away now than ever. So well, what's happening with that? And then we've got Kell Brook situation and Amir Khan. They're trying to get the fight on. That fight shouldn't be allowed in a month of Sundays. They've had 10 years to put that fight on. 10 years. Kell Brook and Amir Khan have both been round the houses They've wrung as much money as they can out of their careers and now nobody's interested in them and that's a shame because me as a fight fan, an hardcore fight fan, I feel robbed of having that fight. I feel robbed of having that fight. Don't even get me started about dope testing. We've got Dominic Ingle up here. Three drug test failures on his watch. Is he going to hand his licence into Boxing Board of Control? Is he it? His family have been on board years, haven't they, area council? So there's not going to happen, is there? Nothing's going to happen. We're just going around in circles and circles. What it needs is somebody like Simon Jordan. That's right, Simon Jordan. So all you hardcore boxing fans from Porky's Corner, send this video to Simon Jordan on Twitter. He can save boxing. This title is going to be called Simon Jordan Can Save British Boxing. Because the Boxing Board of Control, the Freemason people, that's what they are. They're a bunch of old fuddy duddies in an illegal operation governing the sport. They don't govern the sport. They don't do anything for the sport except slink about thinking the popular. Simon Jordan can save boxing. Simon, come and save this sport because you're the only person that's talking sense, utter sense, because none of these want to come on my channel and answer some proper boxing questions. None of them whatsoever. There's accusations about trainers taking underage kids back to their house. This is going back a few years. If this were in boxing, in, in, in football, sorry, it'd be all over newspapers. But boxing just puts its head down, doesn't it? It don't want to talk about things like this. You just want to keep the money rolling in. But what about them boxers? What happens to them? And what happens, that, what happens to them kids on Scrappy? 34 year old with no pension. Footballers get a pension, boxers don't. So Simon Jordan, you can save the sport of boxing, you can save it. You don't know it, but you can. Because you talk sense and you've got a platform. So why don't you get a job at Boxing Board of Control and we get these old fuddy duddies out because the sport's never going to change. It's heading towards going underground. This is in front of our eyeballs. When Anthony Joshua's finished with boxing, Eddie Hearn will go. Who else is the big star at Eddie Hearn's stable? Who? Who's the big star at Eddie Hearn's stable? The second biggest star after Anthony Joshua is Eddie Hearn. He's, he's made it all about him. Dylan White's not a big star. He's not even fought for a European title. I mean, what's Eddie going to do? Dig Tony Bellew up with a spade? 
I'm going to dig him up from, from graveyard. He can't save it. Derek Chisora has that life punched out of him. Look at Dave Allen. What's happened to Dave Allen? Hey, what's happened to Dave Allen? Punched upside down from being an undefeated fighter. This is all on Eddie Hearn's watch. Just like Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. That's all on Eddie Hearn's watch. And Frank Warren. He's got to play a part in this as well. Between all of them, they've British boxing up. That's what they've done. They've f***ed it up. So, I think that's about it really. There isn't really much else to say, is there really? Where is it heading? I don't know. But I just want to finish on one thing, right? The English Institute of Sport is lottery funded. Robert McCracken's been up there 12 year. 12 year he's been up there. His professional fighters that he's been training have been training up there, using the facilities. These are millionaire fighters like Carl Froch, Anthony Joshua, who said in, oh, he wants to be a billionaire, doesn't he? Why can't he get his own gym? Hey, Anthony Joshua, get his own gym. How can Robert McCracken run that up there and be impartial? He can't, can he? Hey, it's amateurs, for amateurs, not professionals, and it's wrong. Could you imagine St George's where the England FA train, where England team train, if Liverpool were using facilities there with Klopp? and nobody else were able to use it. Hey, how can that be fair? They're all gaining a, an advantage on everybody else, although it didn't help Joshua the other night, did it? But that's just my opinion on it all. The sport needs a complete overall from top to bottom, and it needs saving, and it needs somebody like you, Simon Jordan, to save the sport of boxing. That's for speaking up against what happened at weekend, Simon Jordan, because nobody in mainstream media is gonna say a word. I'm saying a word. A few, a few words about it. There's a few other people as well. Uh, the Beautiful Boxing Podcast, Boxing Asylum, uh, Ultra Tech Sports, YouTube, Bayloric TV, but nobody else is saying a word to save this great sport. So Simon Jordan, come on board, get in touch with Porky's Corner, porkycorner at mail.com. Get in touch with me, Simon. You know, and I'll sort you out a free pair of Porky's Corner tracky bottoms. All right. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares, Eddie Earn, because I'm coming for you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's filming in Leeds. We've done that little short video there that hopefully everybody will send to Simon Jordan, because I think he's the only man that can save the sport of boxing and uh, we've done the helmets of the month uh, so all right no doubt i'm going to get a, a bit of grief off you all for uh, my atea for the outside filming today we can't wear stuff like this in front of green screen so i've had to get that other stuff off and put stuff on that i'm more comfortable with but i'm a bit out there aren't i but listen my heart's in the right place I love the sport of boxing and I think that if we're not outspoken about what's going on, it's going to go underground and I've got statistics that prove that it's heading underground. The 18 to 24 year olds are all jumping over to watch UFC. This is in front of our eyeballs and this is on Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren's, Dennis Hobson's, Mick Ennis's, Barry McGuigan's and all them promoters, Steve Goodwin, Steve Wood. Carl Greaves, everybody, Neil Marsh. This is on everybody's watch. Fights are not happening. Conor Ben David Evanesian's not happening. Fury Joshua's not happening. Dylan White, Joe Joyce, that's not happening. Why? Why can't they all work together and just get these fights on? Because I'll tell you this much, if boxing goes underground, they'll all want to fight anybody. They'll all want to fight them, won't they? Hey, but it's just... Do you know what I mean? People just want to fight easy fights and pick up money. Fighters are becoming businessmen and not fighters. That's what's happening and the fans are sick of it. If I could just show you some of the emails I get, sick to death of it and they're all turning towards UFC now. Like I said, nobody's coming out and speaking about it. These YouTubers are not going to say anything because they'll get the press passes took off them. Like me, you'll get refused. Do you know what I mean? Steve Bunce tried to speak up years ago and Mickey Duff banned him for two years. And this is what happens. What is it, a new world order in boxing? 
Well, we have to do and say as we pl as they say. Hey, have we all got to dance to their tune? Ian and Warrens and everybody else, all these promoters. People need to stop complaining to me. I can't be in front of this. That includes all you laminate holders. You've all got to come out and speak up. Do you mind saying it under your breath or to your mates in pub or to your missus in bed? Say it on your social media is what you're unhappy with. Do you know what I mean? It's going down the pan and it's in front of our eyeballs. And on that note, end of bum. Porky's Corner is proud to be sponsored by Spartan Site Solutions. They are specialists in civil engineering and demolition contracts for the construction industry. Interested parties should visit their website or contact Porky's Corner for a referral at porkycorner@mail.com.